I want to talk about how you value stocks. Now, when you value stocks, you essentially use the same tools that you use to value a bond. The one difference is, is that where bonds, the interest, the principal, and the maturity date are all known for a bond, they are not known for a stock. So while we still use the tools of present value, we oftentimes have to make assumptions in order to value a stock. But basically, the valuation of a stock looks like this. I mean, the price of the stock is going to be equal to the dividend you get in the first period divided one by one plus the interest rate plus the dividend you get in the second year divided by one plus the interest rate squared and essentially on and on for as many years as you hold the stock we'll say that's period N and we have to discount that by 1 plus R to the nth power plus the price you sell the stock for in year N and we have to discount that back so that's the one problem where this is basically the same as valuing a bond when we had a bond we had interest payments here or coupons and we had the maturity value at the end of the period now in the case of a stock dividends are not a legal obligation to the firm at least not until they are declared by the board of directors so a company can pay dividends or not pay dividends they can increase their dividend from the previous year they can reduce it so it can change from year to year in the case of a coupon bond you get the same payment every year we don't know when the stock matures stock doesn't actually mature companies can be in business for for decades or for that matter for centuries so we have to make some assumption about the price that you sell the stock for or if you choose not to sell the stock then we we assume that you know you receive a dividend essentially forever so we have to make certain assumptions so let's make let's make um uh, let's do some simple cases here okay so let's talk about a one period model and let's assume that the dividend next year is equal to five dollars and that the price of the stock next year so we use the subscript one is let's say eighty five dollars so you're buying it today you get a five dollar dividend next year and you get an eighty five dollar price when you sell it what's the price of the stock worth today it's going to be oh need an interest rate so let me put in an interest rate and let's make that twelve percent so in this case you're going to have five dollars divided by one point one two plus eighty five dollars divided by one point one two okay they're both in the same time period so we can add those together so we would have ninety divided by one point one two and we get a price of eighty dollars and thirty six cents so if you paid eighty dollars and thirty six cents for this stock you would receive a twelve percent return if we had a two period case so let's say two periods and let's say that d1 is again five dollars let's say d2 is equal to 550 and say the price that you sell the stock for in year two is equal to ninety one dollars okay we we'll use the same interest rate again just a present value problem price of the stock equals five divided by one point one two plus five fifty divided by one point one two squared plus ninety one divided by one point one two squared and again, we could have added these two numbers so we could have said 9650. 
in year two. So let's see what we get. Five divided by 1.12 is 446. Five fifty. Well, let's add the two together. Okay, so we can have one point one two squared, and we want to flip that over, and then multiply it by five fifty plus ninety one, which is ninety six fifty. So we get seventy six ninety three. And let's just add that to 446. So we get 8138. I'm sorry, 81 and 38 cents. Now, maybe we can make some assumption about the dividends. One assumption we can make is constant dividend. Okay, so the dividend does not change. If we have a constant dividend, this is the case where we have a perpetuity. And you would value it the same fit way you would va value a perpetual bond. So in this case, the price of the stock would be equal to the dividend. I don't need a subscript because it's always the same number. I had a subscript up here because the dividend might be $5 here and $5.50 and $7.50 and it's different. But if we assume that the dividend stays the same, we don't need a subscript. And I'm just going to divide by R. So let's assume that the dividend is equal to $5 forever. And we'll keep the same. We've been using 12%, so let's use 12% as our discount rate. In this case, the price of this stock is going to be 5 divided by 0.12. And let's see what that is. And we get 4167. All right. The last case we generally look at is what's referred to as the constant growth dividend model. Here we assume that dividends grow at a constant rate of G. So the model would look like this. The price of the stock, it's still a present value equation, but the price of the stock is going to be equal to D0, so that's the dividend right now, times 1 plus G divided by 1 plus R plus that same dividend, it's going to grow by 1 plus g squared in the second year, all divided by 1 plus r squared. And essentially this is going to go on and on forever. Now, if you do some algebra, and we're not going to do that here, but if you do, if you do some algebraic manipulation, you can work out that this will collapse to the formula d0 times 1 plus g over r minus g. That's the formula. Or you might write d0 times 1 plus g as d1, dividend next year, divided by r minus g. And the assumption is, is that r is greater than G. That is, the rate of return that's required is greater than the growth rate of dividends. And you can look at the formula. If it's not, 
then you're going to get a negative stock price and that really doesn't make any sense so let's just do a quick example here suppose D0 is is equal to five dollars and the growth rate let's say is five percent and we'll still use the same 12 percent rate of return we've been using then the price of the stock is going to be equal to five dollars times 1.05 divided by R which is 0.12 minus G which is 0 0.05 and so we're going to get five times 1.05 should be five and a quarter divided by 0.12 minus 0.05 is 0.07 and so we get a stock price of $75 let me just let me just give you one warning for the test and homework sometimes a question will say the company has just paid a dividend of five dollars that means they're giving you D0 which means to get D1 you're going to have to multiply it by one plus G on the other hand sometimes they tell you the dividend expected next year is five dollars in which case they've given you D1 and you do not have to multiply it by one plus G so you should be careful when you when you see that kind of problem okay let me tell you one more thing one more thing you can do with this is that you can generalize this formula so that the price of the stock in any period and I'll call this period T is going to be equal to the dividend in time period T plus one so one period in the future divided by R minus G. So let's say we wanted the stock price. We use the same example, but we want the stock price in year five. The price in year five would be equal to the dividend today times one plus the growth rate of dividends, which is 0.05, and you're going to raise it to the sixth power. I almost raised it to the fifth power. Raise it to the sixth power because we want it in year five, we need the dividend in year six, and then divided by R minus G again, 0.12 minus 0.05. I almost said 0.07 because the difference is 0.07. So let's work that out. 1.06 raised to the, I'm sorry, it's 1.05. All right, I butchered this problem pretty good here. 1.05 raised to the sixth power times 5 divided by 0 0.07 which is 0 0.12 minus 0 0.05 so I get 95.72 so if you needed for example let me scroll back up to where we were in the beginning if you did a problem like this and we happen to have a constant growth rate but we know we want to sell the stock at a certain time we can figure out what the stock price will what price will sell it at in year five or year ten by simply using the formula we used before